Hello guys, welcome to Bhavna's Online Academy. So today we are going to see the uh, chapter Cost of Capital. So as you all know, we are uh, running through our uh, financial management revision series. So is, so this is the chapter number two, that is your cost of capital from our FM revision series. So yes, let's get started with the video. So first in this chapter, I'll tell you the scope of the chapter. So what you have is you will have to uh, find something that is known as KO or WACC. What is KO or WACC? This is nothing but the cost of capital or you can call it as the weighted average cost of capital or weighted average cost of capital. So this is what you have to find in the chapter. Okay. So for finding these, you will need a few other costs. For finding this KO or the cost of capital or the weighted average cost of capital, you will have to know how to find a KE, KD, KP and KR. What is this KE, KD, KP and KR? This is nothing but cost of equity KE. This is cost of debt KD. This is cost of preference share KP. And this is cost of retained earning KR. So if you do the average of all these, I'll teach you how to do that. You will get your weighted average cost of capital. So now first what we are going to see is we are going to see individually how each of these is found out. How individually these of this is found out. So first we will start with something that is known as KD then we'll move on to KP then your KE and then lastly we'll see KR okay so first is KD that is your cost of debt so your debt can be either irredeemable or redeemable okay so in the question how will you find whether it is irredeemable or redeemable is that in the question if they give you a hint like a uh, KD will be matured within so many years or the maturity period is this much of years or 5 years or 10 years then that means it is redeemable if no statement like that is given we will assume that the KD is I mean the debt is irredeemable okay for irredeemable debt if you have to find the cost of debt you have to you have to use this formula and for redeemable debt you have to use this formula. So KD equal to interest amount into 1 minus T by net proceeds into 100. So what is this interest amount? Interest amount is nothing but. So in some in question sometimes they will give you 10% debentures of uh, rupees 100 each. Of rupees 100 each you have uh, debt for 1 lakh rupees. So here how will you find the interest amount? Interest amount is nothing but 10% of. 100 rupees that is 10 rupees will be your interest amount here so interest amount is always found out per share okay and it is always found out only in the face value okay so it will be your interest amount then you have to do 1 minus t 1 minus t means 1 minus tax rate suppose your tax rate in the question is given 35 percent that means you will do 1 minus 0 0.35 you have to convert it into decimal and do it here. So it will be 1 minus T and then you have net proceeds. So what is net proceeds? How much money you got in your hands when you got the debt? When you took the debt, how much money was received in your hands? That means uh, what will happen is uh, when you get some kind of a loan. Suppose you have got a loan for 100 rupees. Okay. Suppose you have got a loan or debt for 100 rupees. For getting this one, you will have a few expenses. You will do a few expenses. Okay. These expenses are nothing but they are known as your flotation cost. These expenses which you incur are nothing but your flotation cost. So whatever your sale price is, from that you have to reduce your flotation cost and you will get your net proceeds. So net proceeds, NP means net proceeds. Net proceeds is nothing but issue price minus flotation cost. Okay, in the question they will give you how much the flotation cost is 4% or 5% or how much ever percent. That flotation cost you have to calculate on issue price. Suppose your issue price is 100 and your flotation cost is 4 percent you have to calculate four percent of hundred that is four rupees will be your flotation cost you have to do issue price that is hundred minus flotation cost hundred minus four you will get your net proceeds that is 96 rupees okay this issue price is also known as sale price in the exam yeah you, you will either be given as issue price or it will either be given as sale price okay so in this issue price what all will you consider so whatever the face value of the item is plus if you have issued it at premium you will add the premium or if you have issued it at discount you will reduce the discount from this so face value plus premium or minus discount will give you your issue price from that issue price you have to uh, reduce your deduct your flotation cost and you'll get your net proceeds and you have to do in 200 and you'll get your kd this is in the case of irredeemable debt kd will be found as a percentage okay next is your redeemable so in your redeemable what you have to do is so in uh, redeemable means after certain period of time you're going to redeem it okay so kd equal to interest amount into 1 minus t the same which is here 
here extra is this both so plus rv minus np by n so what is rv rv means redeemable value at what value are going to, are you going to pay it back suppose you got it at 100 rupees and suppose you are going to pay it back at 110 rupees means this 110 rupees will give you in the question that it is either redeemable at par at par means at the same face value you will redeem it or it can be uh, given that it is redeemable at premium or redeemable at discount whatever the amount is according to that you have to find out your redeemable value and you will place it here and minus net proceeds I already told you by n. What is this n? n means the number of years for which this debt is taken. Okay, suppose your maturity period is 10 years means you will write 10 here. Okay, so rv minus np by n you will do this and you will get your numerator and denominator rv plus n by 2. Here it is not n, it is 2. Okay, and if you do this and if you uh, multiply it by 100 you will get your cost of debt okay same way we will see the cost of preference uh, share also the so cost of preference share capital so irredeemable redeemable here what you will do is to find out kp you will do preference dividend amount whatever is there similar here it was interest amount or in the question you might be given that 10 percent preference shares of 100 each are taken then you will find out the preference dividend amount that will be a 10 rupees okay in the face value only you will also find the preference dividend amount so it will be 10 rupees here you won't do 1 minus t here you won't do 1 minus t because preference dividend is uh, given only after tax so you should not do 1 minus t whereas interest amount is given before tax so con to convert this interest amount to after tax amount we have did here 1 minus t here this is already after tax so you, did, you need not do 1 minus t here here and you will do buy net proceeds same way in redeemable uh, what you will do is a preference dividend amount plus rv minus np by n by rv plus np by 2 into 100 okay so this is there okay so also here in a few cases in the denominator rather than taking your net proceeds sometimes you will also have to take your market value sometimes you'll have also have to take your market value okay in all the cases you will not take your net proceeds in the denominator here also you will be you can also take the market value and write it here so this is how you calculate your kdn kp what might happen is there sometimes in the question paper what they will do is uh, they they will tell you to find the cost that is KD. Sometimes they will tell you to find your cost that is KD. And suppose you will take the example of KP also. So they will tell you to find KD and KP. But what might happen is that they will not give you any other information. They will not give you any other information. They will only give you the percentage of interest. Or they will a, or give you the percentage of preference dividend. They will just directly give you that 15% debentures and 10% preferences. And 10% preferences they will give you. And they will tell you to find the cost of debt and cost of preference. In such case, if no other information is given, what you have to do is you have to take your tax rate. Definitely in the question, they will give you the tax rate. Suppose if the tax rate is 50%. Suppose if the tax rate is 50%. How will you find your cost of debt and cost of uh, preferential? So in such case, what you have to just do interest rate into 1 minus t. If they haven't given you net proceeds or anything, what you have to do is you will have to change the formula. There is something that is known as a shortcut formula. There is something that is known as a shortcut formula where the formula is interest rate into 1 minus t this interest rate into 1 minus t is for cost of debt for a preference share it is just the preference dividend rate okay so likewise for preference i already told you you need not do 1 minus t so directly a preference dividend rate if your preference dividend rate is given 10 percent in the question and you don't have any other information available regarding np or mv then you will take this 10 percent itself as your kp your cost of preference okay uh, so these were the two extra points also in your question uh, rather than giving you that 15% uh, uh, dividends they may also give dangers of 1 lakh rupees are of an interest rate of 15% okay this interest rate they may use another word here that is known as coupon rate so coupon rate and interest rate both are same so that is that is another point okay there's one more point in the question what will happen is sometimes they will not give you whether it is redeemable at par or premium or discount. If it is given at par the same face value you can take. Okay. Suppose in the question they have given you maturity period but they did not tell you what your uh, redeemable value was. Okay. First you have to take whatever is given as redeemable value. Okay. If that is not given you will take your face value as your redeemable value. If face value is also not given in the question then in such case you will take 100 rupees as your redeemable value. You will take 100 rupees 
this as your redeemable value. So these are the three options. First, water is given in the question. You have to take if that is not available. Your face value. If face value is also not available, then your hundred rupees as your redeemable value. Okay. So what did we see until now? We saw for cost KD irredeemable. How will you find redeemable? How will you find for percent share irredeemable? How will you find redeemable? How will you find? Then NP can also be written as uh, market price. If it is a new issue, write the net proceeds. If it is already a existing share, you have to write market price in the denominator. And then also shortcut visa if no other information is given. And also one more point that your interest rate can also be said as a coupon rate. Okay, in this case, so that also you have to take it as interest rate only. Okay, so now we are done with our KD and. KP. Okay. Next, what we are going to see is something known as a K. So your K is general formula will be D1 by P0 into 100 plus G. Okay. This is your general formula. This is the formula that will be asked in maximum number of questions. So now we will break down this and we will see what are the different types of uh, what are these all and what are the different types of cases. So first, what is D1? D1 is nothing but your next expected dividend. So D1 is nothing but your next expected dividends. That means Uh, by the end of the year, in the future, or by the end of the year, what your expected dividend is going to be? That will that is known as D1. So that means in your question, D1 may be given as either next year uh, expected dividend, or it may be told as the dividend which is uh, going to you are going to get at the end of year one. Okay, anything that is denoted in your future terms in questions that will be your D1. If D1 is not directly given like this, then what you have to do is you will have to find your DO. And you will have to do one plus D. How will DO be given in the question? DO can be given in the question as past year dividend, or as your current year dividend, which is already existing. This is not futuristic, okay? So if these words are given, then what you have to do is you have to consider that dividend as your DO, and you have to do one plus D. G is nothing but your growth rate. A certain percent you will be given that it is five percent or whatever percent you have to do one plus D. That is one plus zero point zero five, okay? And you will get your D1. Okay, so D1 by PO. PO is nothing but your net proceeds or market price. I'll tell you what you have to take in which case. Okay, and you have to do into hundred, and you'll get your, uh, you'll get a percentage, and that you have to uh, add with your growth percentage, and you'll get your KE, and you will get your KE. Okay, so there may be a certain cases. Sometimes your G will not be given. Sometimes your G will not be given. If growth rate is not given directly, what you can do is you can just do this D1 by PO into 100. Okay. If sometimes your dividend might be not given, that means this will not be given. Your D1 will also be not given. Your DO will also be not given. Rather, in the question, they will tell you about something known as earnings per share. Okay. If earnings per share is given, you have to take your EPS. Okay. That you have to take it as your dividend. Okay. Next is uh, your growth rate will also be not given. Dividend be will also be not given. In that case, you have to do one by PE ratio. This case mostly won't come in exam. These two cases are usually seen. Okay. Next that we spoke about D one. That we spoke about D one. Okay. Next we are going to speak about a few cases for G. So in G in question normally the growth rate will be given. Okay, if the growth rate is not directly given in the question, then you have to use your past trend data and find out your growth date. And if your past trend is also not given, in such case you have to do G equal to B into R. B will be your retention ratio and R will be your return on equity. This formula we'll read in another chapter. Okay, so here if you don't understand it, it's still okay. We're going to read it in. Another chapter. Okay, so these are the cases for D1 and G here for P0. So for P0, you have a few cases. If in the question, what will happen is, see, most probably in all the cases, you will only choose your NP. There is only one case where what will happen is your market value is given. If your market value is not given, definitely you will have to take NP only. Okay, if your market value is given and flotation cost is also given, that means you will have to take your denominator as NP here. Here you have to take your denominator as NP. But if your market value is given and flotation cost is not given, in such case you will take your uh, PO as market value only. Okay, so remember this table alone. So now we have seen about all the three factors here. We have seen the three different formulas. What there can be uh, for D1? Then we saw the three different uh, possibilities for G, and we saw four different possibilities for PO. That is either MB or NP in whatever case. 
K just remember this chart. So this is all about K. So there is also another model by which you can find your K E that is known as your uh, capital asset pricing model. That is known as your capital asset pricing model. So K E equal to R F plus R M minus R F into beta. Question here, uh, you will get these factors. You have to do all this and you will find your K E. Okay. So R F can be given in the question as risk free premium or government rate or rate of treasury bill or T bill rate or risk free rate of return. If any of these wordings come in the exam then it refers to RF. Then your RM minus RF that can be known as your uh, market risk premium or just risk premium. And individually if RM is given it will be given as market return then you have to do RM minus RF and you will get your uh, this bracket. And into beta you have to do this can be known as either beta or it can be known as market sensitivity index or it can also be known as security or it can be known as market related risk. Okay these four terms you can that can be used for beta. So using all these you can find your K. So we have now read about how to find KD, KP and K. I hope all of this is clear. Next what we are going to find is something that is known as KR. So how will you find your KR? So KR how will you find is KR is the same as your KE. Whatever answer you get in KE the same answer will be taken as your cost of retained earning also. But there is one exception. Okay so same as KE only difference will be that uh, when your net proceeds you are calculating right. So for KR also you can use the same formula that is D1 by PO plus D. But if suppose in denominator if you are taking something that is known as net proceeds. In such case your flotation cost you must not deduct from NP. That one thing you have to remember. Okay so or else the same will only be or else the same thing only will be for your KR also. And um, if your personal tax or shareholder tax is given in the exam in the question then you will do KR equal to KE into 1 minus personal tax okay if this personal tax or nothing about shareholder tax is given you will directly take your KR equal to KE so now we have seen individually how these four are calculated uh, in the next video we are going to see how the weighted average cost of capital is Calculator. In the next video is what is exam oriented. If you find you are able to find all these only you will be able to find your weighted average cost of capital and in exam they won't ask you individually rather they will ask you only weighted average cost of capital. So see you in the next video guys. Bye bye.